Hi, this is Extended Calculus, Lesson 1.3, BC, Infinite Limits, Limits at Infinity, Curve Sketching. This was all set up by Taylor and Shaw. Now, if we look at uh, this lesson, we want to review quickly this first one, the graph of the function right here, and it, where does it have a hole? Well, remember, if, factor, if factors can cancel, we're going to have a hole at x equal to 1. Now, what we might do, too, is we might say, well, what's the y-coordinate that's associated with this? Well, how we do this is that we have what we call the reduced form. So f reduced of x is going to be 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared x minus 4 cubed. So if I take this 1 now and plug it in here for this function... I'm going to get negative 1 over 27, I believe, if I did that right. So if I plug in 1 here, I'm going to get a 1. If I plug in 1 here, I'm going to get a negative 3 raised to the third would be a 27, negative 27. Then, <clears throat> moving on, this one we have an even vertical asymptote. Where? Well, this is an even degree polynomial right there, and so at x equal to 2, we're going to have an even degreed vertical asymptote. Where are we going to have an odd one? Well, it's going to be at the value of 4. How does this look now? Well, if we have an odd degree vertical asymptote, one is going to go to positive infinity, one side, and the other side is going to go to negative infinity. If it's even, both are going to go to the same thing. So we have the pictures down here. Even, I like to call this the volcano. Did I spell volcano right? No, I didn't. Volcano. If we have an even degree vertical asymptote, we also might get the vortex going down here, both going down. And then if I'm odd degree, I'm either going to get this one or this one where they would be in opposite directions. Next page, infinite limits. So we have seen examples where a limit does not exist at a vertical asymptote. Now we want to try to classify them graphically. If both sides of the vertical asymptote go to, for instance, positive infinity, we're going to say positive infinity. If both sides go to negative infinity, we're going to say negative infinity. With one-sided limits at vertical asymptotes, you are going to say positive infinity or negative infinity. The only time you would not say this is that if you had one side going up and the other side going down or vice versa, then we would say does not exist for the overall limit. But if it's one-sided limits, we can always say positive infinity or negative infinity at a vertical asymptote. So let's look at what happens here. This is a one-sided limit. Remember that if we're on the right side, we're thinking 2.1. So if I plug in 2.1 into the numerator, I'm going to get a positive value. In the denominator, I'm going to get a positive value too. So what this tells me is that overall, one-sided limit, I'm going to go to positive infinity. No problem. This one, I'm going to think 1.9. When I plug that into here, I'm going to get a positive value. In the denominator, I'm going to get a negative value. Positive divided by a negative is... Negative, so that's going to tell me I'm going to negative infinity. I don't want to actually write these things as part of my problem, but that's what I'm thinking. All right, now number three. When we do the limit as x approaches 1, so we're going to be thinking 1.1. We're going to be to the right of 1, so I'm thinking 1.1. When I plug that into the numerator, I'm going to get a negative. When I plug it into the denominator... I'm going to get, well, it's always going to be positive because I have the squared. Oh, that looks like a volcano situation, doesn't it? Well, regardless, I'm going to go to negative infinity. One side limit, I can declare. Over here, I'm going to think 0.9. That's going to be the left side of 1. So when I do that, I'm going to get a negative here, and I'm going to get a positive here. Notice that this thing is always positive, and so, yeah, I'm not going to get a sign change from over here to over here. So this one's going to go negative infinity as well. That's going to be my vortex.
situation where both are going down at x equal to 1, vertical asymptote. And then how about number 5 now? Number 5 says x approaches 2 overall. Well, notice again that we do have a factoring canceling situation. And when I, once I reduce this to x plus 2, I can do a direct substitution. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. So I can evaluate that one straight. Direct substitution once I've canceled things. Next page, limits at infinity. We can also call this and behavior. And behavior. What is our behavior as x goes to infinity? If we're approaching some sort of line, we want that we want to know what that line is, y equal to l. Then we can say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l. In other words, limits at infinity give us n behaviors for graphs of functions. So what we try to look at are the highest degree terms in the numerator and denominator. Everything else is going to be drowned out relative to those. So if you plug in a billion in a, a, a polynomial that's raised to the fourth and something that's raised to the second, the one that's raised to the fourth is going to drown out something raised to the second. So let's look at some exa examples here. So if we look at this one, I, my recording kind of blew it, so I already have some of this stuff written out. But I take the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, that is equal to 1 half. How do I know that? Well, I have a fourth degree polynomial and a fourth degree polynomial top and bottom. So I take the coefficients and I just divide those two. Why do I ignore these poor souls? Well, if I take, for instance, a billion and I raise it to the fourth power and I raise it to the second power, the fourth power is going to drown out anything to the second power. So all I'm doing is looking at these leading terms to find out what my limit will go to. That will tell me then that my horizontal asymptote in the form of an equation is y equal to 1 half. You can also look at, well, if we do number 7 here, we can look at which one, which one grows faster. If I look at the numerator and I look at the denominator, I see a fifth degree polynomial down here and a fourth degree on top. Which one grows faster? Well, the bottom will grow faster, so I'm going to have a big on the bottom relative to something smaller on top. So when I talk about the limit as x goes to infinity of g of x, the bottom is going to drown out the top. So that means I'm going to go to 0. So when I talk about a horizontal asymptote, then this is going to be y equal to 0. And so you can always compare functions. You can get into exponential functions, logarithmic functions, and compare them. If the bottom grows faster than the top, then your horizontal asymptote is going to be 0. y equal to 0. And then now number 8, looking at this, I notice that my degree in the numerator is 4, denominator is 3. So the top's going to grow faster than the bottom. So my limit as x goes to infinity of h of x is going to be infinity. It's going to go to positive infinity. You can do the same thing with uh, negative infinity too, which I haven't, but in this case, there is no horizontal asymptote. If you do take a fourth degree polynomial and divide by a third degree polynomial, your end behavior is going to be a line. And usually y equal to x or some form of that. Then examples 9, 10 and 11, I actually did them up ahead or up above, but it's just those same limits as I just spoke about. Okay, and then those limits turn out to be what your horizontal asymptote is as well, unless uh, obviously if you'd go off to infinity, then that might be a slant asymptote, which we don't talk about too much. How about number 12? Now, if it's in this form, you could expand it, but that's a little bit of a waste of time. Let's be smart about this. Let's take these leading terms and just work with those because I know that's going to generate my highest degree polynomial or the leading term of my high of my leading forget it let's just do it okay so if I take 2x this would be 2x to the first this one would be x to the second 
So overall, it looks like I got a 2x to the third in the numerator. In the denominator, I have x to the first. And then here with this 3x, I got it squared. That looks like a 9x squared to me. So overall, that looks like 9x cubed. So my limit as x goes to infinity of this thing is going to be, looks like 2 ninths to me. So that would be my answer, 2 ninths. So you can get rid of all that excess stuff because it's just going to generate the terms that are insignificant. Take the leading terms, raise them to the exponents, and then you can find 2 ninths. Now this is really kind of a nice idea here is that rational functions like what we saw below, as we go to positive infinity or negative infinity, the top and bottom are kind of going the same way. And so you would go to the same value no matter what. But with these radical functions now, what happens is that if I take the square root of x squared, well, that gives me an absolute value situation. And so maybe I might end up with different limits. So let's look at both of these and see what happens. Okay, when I go to x going to infinity, what happens with this negative 3? Well, that becomes insignificant. So this is going to behave like, and I'm just thinking out loud, this is going to be kind of like the square root of 4x squared all over x. Well, what's the square root of x squared? Well, it is the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x. I put a 4 here, but the square root of 4 is 2. And then I can write that all over x. So when I look at this, as x goes to infinity, positive infinity, this is going to be positive, this is going to be positive, and so this is just going to behave like 2. And so that's what my limit would be. Now if I go over to this other example, number 14, I'm going to take and plug in negative infinity here. Negative, and if I square this, this square root is always going to give me a positive value. This in the denominator is always going to give me a negative value. So overall, I'm going to get a negative something. So it's going to behave like this right here, this limit. As x approaches negative infinity, the numerator is positive, the denominator is negative. So this would turn out to be negative 2. My overall limit for this one with the radical would be negative 2. So here's my graph of this same function. And sure enough, here's my y equal to negative 2, and here's my y equal to positive 2. And those don't look so nice, so I can graph them on here as well. So there's my end behavior and how it looks. Two different horizontal asymptotes. And remember, you can cross a horizontal asymptote. We should probably check to see if this one does cross or not. If you ever want to see if you cross a horizontal asymptote, just take your function, set it equal to the horizontal asymptote, solve it. If you get a value, then it's going to cross. So, for instance, you could just go like this, and you go ahead and solve this. I'll let you do that. If you want to see if it crosses the other horizontal asymptote, you just would go square root of 4x squared minus 3 all over x. Does that equal negative 2? Solve it. Cross multiply and do what you got to do. That's how you would check. And once you solve for x, sometimes you get like uh, 3 equals negative 3. Well, then it does not cross. But if you get x equal to a value, then it does cross the horizontal asymptote.